We went to Vietnam for 10 days and brought with me three devices to capture the size of the country. My Sony a7C II full frame camera, my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and this Xiaomi 14. I originally planned to use my Sony camera to capture the best photo quality possible and my iPhone 13 Pro Max for video. Guess what? That didn't happen. I actually ended up using the Xiaomi 14 for both photo and video without worrying about loss of quality. I know it's weird to start this video with a camera review, but I was caught by surprise by the quality. As someone who came from the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 to the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the Xiaomi 12 Pro and then to the Xiaomi 14, this is the first time I'm going to say with confidence that an Android phone can replace an iPhone in terms of both photo and video quality. Take note, I said both. Let me start with the videos. I've said this before, I am more of a video guy than a photo guy. I need to have the best smartphone video in my pocket. What happened to be just a test of Xiaomi's 14 capabilities became a reliable pocket companion with me on my first travel to Vietnam. Technically speaking, the phone has three 50 megapixel cameras in the back for wide, ultra wide, and telephoto. All three support up to 4K60, including the 32 megapixel selfie camera, by the way, so that's a nice bonus for me since I don't use 60 FPS when traveling. On paper, that sounds great, but I think what made these cameras really great is a partnership with Leica. At this point, I know the phone has great stabilization across the board and great quality across the board. But for the colors, man, there's just that certain Leica look that's great about them to the point you don't have to edit just because it looks good already straight from the camera. I posted a two-part Vietnam vlog on my channel. I suggest watching those videos if you want to see the quality of these cameras in action. But as far as photos go, there's not much to complain. Whether it's the wide, ultra-wide, or telephoto lens, you're gonna get great photo quality. In broad daylight, the amount of detail is so incredible, it might seem like it came from a professional camera. The bokeh, the sharpness, the colors, everything is on point with Leica colors that look just unique and outstanding. Thanks to the high megapixel cam, there's plenty of detail between the three cameras. Yes, the main camera still gets the sharpest photo, but the difference between the three is much closer than you expect. There will be times wherein the white balance between the three won't match, which is not as good as Apple's, but it's not a big deal. I guess because these cameras are so great, it's easier to discuss the quirks instead. Other than the inconsistent white balance, Xiaomi tends to show brighter whites almost to the point of blowing it out, and the telephoto lens sometimes doesn't know how to expose properly when dealing with darker subjects. But otherwise, there's really not much to say other than great. The colors look great. The sharpness looks great. Stabilization looks great. These are great cameras and I think you should have no problem with this phone if that's what you're looking for at this kind of price point. I did find it weird there's no way to capture a raw photo for a phone this expensive. You normally expect that from a camera-centric device. Yeah, that's just me. But before we leave the topic of cameras, I would like to address this moist issue again. In professional cameras, the fogging of the lens typically happens when there's a sudden temperature change. This applies to phone cameras as well. If your phone is cool and suddenly makes contact with warm air, fogging can occur. The good thing is you just need to give it time for the fog to clear up. So far, my unit has not had this problem, but in case your unit's issue persists, it's best to send that unit to Xiaomi or their authorized reaper center. Considering the Xiaomi 14 was my main camera phone during my travel, I was heavily using it already. But it's not all though. I was also using it as my hotspot device to connect to the internet. So all day, it was connected to mobile data with the hotspot turned on, as well as having Google Maps on for the majority of the time. Since this is a small phone with a 4610mAh cell, expect to charge two times a day because that's what happened to me with that kind of heavy use. On regular days, you can stretch out the battery to a full day of use, so despite the battery clocking in under 5000, you shouldn't be worried about battery life. The performance is certainly on par with any other flagship phone out right now, and since this is running HyperOS, expect the best optimization from Xiaomi as well. They've come a long way, and like I've said in the past, Xiaomi's UI is one of my favorites in terms of simplicity and cleanliness. Yes, they can be plagued by ads sometimes, but only if you use first-party apps, which I hardly use anyway. So this is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, currently the latest and greatest from Qualcomm, and it is paired with 12GB of RAM and half a terabyte storage. You know, 
for a small phone with a powerful chip, there was not a single time it overheated. It only became warm at best, never to the point of alarmingly hot to the touch. Yes, this is a relatively small phone with its 6.36 inches display. By today's standards, I think this is the smallest phone you can get right now, especially since the Zenfone 10 from Asus was the last smallest Android flagship along with Apple's iPhone mini lineup. For someone who drove an iPhone 12 mini back in the day, I think this is the perfect size for me who likes to have a handy one-hand phone while having a decent screen space to enjoy watching anime or series of Netflix, especially YouTube videos. That was my main problem with the 12 mini because the screen was too small to enjoy video content. But this OLED panel is also top-notch. It goes up to 120Hz and supports Dolby Vision with up to 3000 nits peak brightness and about 1000 nits in high brightness mode. So even under the scorching sun of Vietnam, nothing impeded me from using my phone comfortably. Protection-wise, it has Gorilla Glass Victus on the front with an aluminum frame that I wish was not glossy, but you do get the complete water and dust resistance package thanks to the IP68 rating. And the stereo speakers sound great considering this is a small phone. There is one weird thing I noticed with this display. It only happened twice and I'm not sure how to trigger it again, but the screen would just dim and brighten itself automatically. I do have the auto brightness turned on, but it's a weird type of bug because the ambient lighting wasn't changing and it happened twice indoors. But all in all, despite the bells and whistles of AI that seemingly is becoming the trend nowadays, Xiaomi 14 makes it easier to recommend to anyone who just wants a great flagship experience without compromising the camera quality, especially video, because Android usually isn't great when it comes to that. But aside from that, I like the form factor of this phone. I hope we get to test more phones of this size and not just the ones with the biggest screen, the biggest battery, the biggest everything. But that's it for this one. Drop a sub or like if you like supporting the channel, and as always, until the next one, stay safe.